Welcome to the Banner Core Center for Orthopedics, where we have combined the expertise of two world-class leaders in order to provide you with the best-in-class orthopedic care. The Banner Core Center of Orthopedics is a joint venture between Banner Health and the Core Institute. We offer a full range of orthopedic care in Arizona, including joint replacement and revision, sports medicine, shoulder, elbow, and hand surgery, foot and ankle reconstruction, and orthopedic spine procedures. Welcome to your Independence Expedition class at the Banner Core Center for Orthopedics. You will begin your physical preparation to maximize your experience, review do's and don'ts before and after surgery, and review the pre-surgical exercise program. I will be your nurse navigator throughout this educational class. Each learning activity will be broken into chapters for you to quickly reference each topic we will be covering. The goal of the Independence Expedition class is to ensure you are physically ready for surgery and to enhance your journey to independence. Let's begin your journey to independence. Chapter 1, Home Preparation. Becoming more aware of hazards in your home can help make your recovery as safe as possible. You may want to have furniture rearranged so it's easier to get around. In the bathroom, aids like a handheld shower head and a raised toilet seat can help you stay safe. Don't forget to watch out for hazards like wet floors or uneven surfaces. Special equipment may help you have a safer and easier recovery. Today we will review several adaptive equipment devices to assist you. Securely fasten safety bars or handrails in your shower or bath. The grab bars will help you steady yourself, especially when getting in and out of the tub or shower. Secure handrails along all stairways. You should have a stable chair for your early recovery with a firm seat cushion, a firm back, and armrests to make transitions safe and easy. A recliner chair can prove to be comfortable a raised toilet seat or high toilet, a stable shower bench or chair for bathing. You need to take extra care when bathing and only bathe when your surgeon has said it's okay to do so. A long handled sponge or handheld shower head, a dressing stick, a sock aid, and a long handled shoehorn to assist with dressing tasks. A long handled kit has devices to assist with pulling on pants, socks, and shoes a reacher that will allow you to grab objects off the floor safely. Remove all loose carpets and electrical cords from areas where you walk in your home to avoid falls. Stock up on toiletries and other items you will need during recovery. Simplify cooking tasks by preparing meals in advance and freezing them. Store foods and other supplies between waist and shoulder level, making them easier to reach without straining. Avoid heavy-duty housework, such as vacuuming, until your surgeon clears you. Ask your doctor if you need to limit using stairs. If you do, and you normally sleep upstairs, prepare a bedroom on the main living level. Watch out for pets or small objects on the floor. Chapter 2, Do's and Don'ts for Surgery. Do wash from the neck down using a fresh, clean washcloth and the chlorhexidine scrub the night before and morning of surgery. But be careful not to use it on your head or face and avoid contact with your eyes. Do not apply any lotion or ointments to the skin. Do pack a hospital bag with your necessities such as your personal care items, flat shoes with a good sole, and a change of clothes to wear while at the hospital. For enjoyment, bring some reading material or activities to do during your hospital stay. Do bring a list of all your medications, dose requirements, and time of day the medication is taken. Do notify your physician if a cold, fever, or other infection develops before surgery. This includes dental infections. Do discontinue blood thinning medications seven days prior to surgery. Prior to stopping all medications, you should consult with your primary care physician. Do discontinue any herbal supplements, vitamins, or weight loss medications seven days before surgery. Do bring your walker, CPAP machine, or any other devices you use on a daily basis to the hospital. 
Do brush your teeth the day of surgery, but be careful not to swallow any water. Do bring your eyeglasses and or dentures along with denture cream if needed. It is important to follow the guidelines prior to surgery. Here is a list of things that you do not want to do. On the day of the surgery, do not shave the surgical area. Eat or drink anything. This includes chewing gum, throat lozenges, and water. These instructions are extremely important in preventing aspiration during anesthesia and the complications it can bring. Do not wear makeup, hair accessories, lotion, ointments, powders, perfume, cologne the morning of the surgery. Do not smoke after midnight. Smoking can irritate the lungs, contribute to nausea, and reduces your body's ability to fight infection. Do not bring any jewelry, cash, credit cards, or important items with you to the hospital. If you do not follow these instructions, your surgery may be canceled. The day of surgery has finally arrived. You will complete your morning routine the day of surgery, including a shower, using the chlorhexidine scrub from the neck down. Do not wear makeup, hairpins, lotion, powder, perfume. Wear comfortable, loose-fitting clothes that are easy to take off and put on. You may brush your teeth, but be careful not to swallow any water. What to bring to the hospital? Your patient passport. Your patient passport was given to you by your surgeon, or you can access it online. This is your complete guide to your surgical experience. Keep it on hand to make notes, and you can always reference back to it if you have any questions. Photo identification, personal items, toothbrush, deodorant, battery-operated razors, eyeglasses, hearing aids, dentures, and denture cream two elastic waistband shorts or pants, two loose-fitting shirts, well-fitting flat shoes, sneakers preferred, and socks. Chapter three, what to expect at the hospital. Once at the hospital, you will be escorted to the pre-operative waiting area. Here, you will be checked in by the surgical staff and escorted to the pre-operative area to prepare for surgery. Upon entering your hospital room, you will be asked to change into a hospital gown with support stockings. All of your personal items should be placed in the designated bag. You will receive your belongings back after surgery. After your vitals and medical history have been confirmed, you are now ready for surgery. After your surgery has been completed, you will be transported to the Post Anesthesia Care Unit, or PACU. You will hear these terms a lot. Here, the nursing staff will place you on monitors to follow your blood pressure, heart rate, oxygen level, alertness, and pain level. An important part of the PACU is to ensure that you are comfortable and stable after surgery. Pain medications will be administered as needed through your IV line. Upon entering the orthopedic floor, where you will recover from surgery, you will be greeted by your orthopedic team. Banner Health has made identifying your care team a little easier. In navy blue, you will find your nurse who will assist you throughout your stay. In addition, in the light blue, you will find your nursing assistant. Our physical therapy department is clothed in brown scrubs and respiratory team in green scrubs. Last but not least, our laboratory team can be identified in olive scrubs and our transportation team in tan scrubs. Upon arrival to the orthopedic floor, a nurse will meet you in your room and welcome you to the unit. A set of vital signs will be taken, your surgical dressing will be checked, your foot will be closely monitored for warmth, pulse, sensation, and movement. If you experience any numbness or tingling in your foot, heel pain, or increased discomfort, you should alert your nurse. The IV will keep you hydrated. Your pain will be closely monitored and treated as necessary with oral pain medications and intravenous narcotics as needed. Compression stockings, also known as TED hose, may be placed on your legs along with a sequential compression device to promote circulation. The evening of surgery, the nursing staff or therapy team will help you get out of bed and walk. Therapy will discuss activities you can do on your own to encourage motion and promote circulation. 
Your therapist will fit you for an appropriate walking aid, such as a walker or cane, to assist you during recovery. Throughout your hospital stay, you will be encouraged to work on your exercises in your room and walk through the halls with assistance. In the beginning, you will likely need assistance when transferring from bed, completing daily tasks, and walking. The nursing staff is available to help you during your hospital stay. Please use your patient passport to guide you through each individual section. Chapter 4, Your Post-Operative Therapy and Care. Your therapy staff will teach you exercises to increase your strength and range of motion, instruct and assist you with your exercise program after surgery. They will teach you the correct way to safely walk and perform activities of daily living. Another important role of your therapy team is to teach you how to adapt to the temporary lifestyle changes following your surgery. Chapter 5, Your Discharge Home. The success of your surgery will depend on how well you follow your orthopedic team's instructions during the first few weeks after your surgery. Medications. Resuming your home medications will be determined by your physician. Please follow up with your primary care physician to ensure you are back on your prior medication regimen. Wound care. You have a surgical wound that requires daily attention and monitoring. You should keep a clean gauze dressing over your wound, changing it daily once you are home. Keep the incision clean and dry at all times. Make sure to ask your surgeon when you can shower. Do not immerse your incision in water for a total of six weeks after surgery. This includes pools, hot tubs, lakes, and bath water. Be sure to monitor your incision for any signs of infection and notify your surgeon immediately should you show any symptoms. Preventing infection. You now have an artificial joint which is at risk for bacterial infection. Following your joint replacement, antibiotics should be taken before any dental cleanings, oral surgery, or any other invasive procedure. Please consult with your primary care physician prior to any procedures. If you question whether you should take an antibiotic or not, it is always safer to do so. Always feel free to call your surgeon with any questions. Blood clot prevention. After an orthopedic surgery, patients are at an increased risk for developing blood clots in their lower extremities. Patients are treated with a blood thinner immediately after surgery, followed by aspirin therapy. Upon discharge, you should take one 325 milligram enteric coated aspirin twice daily for six weeks total. Your surgeon may prescribe another type of blood thinner and frequent monitoring of blood levels are required. Each patient is different and your surgeon will consult with you about which therapy is right for you. Pain management. After your surgery, you may require prescription pain medications. Medications such as Percocet, Vicodin, or Tramadol may be prescribed. These medications need to be monitored closely as they are narcotics, and prolonged use poses a risk for addiction. You should treat your pain only as needed with these medications and wean off the narcotics in the first few weeks following surgery. Diet. Some loss of appetite is common for several weeks following your surgery. A balanced diet, including an iron supplement, is important to promote proper tissue healing and restore muscle strength. It may help to eat smaller meals more frequently. If you are having difficulty managing solid foods, try a nutritional meal replacement drink. If after a week you are still experiencing problems with your appetite, contact your surgeon. And always remember to drink plenty of fluids. Activity. You will receive therapy instructions before you discharge from the hospital. Your therapy team will provide you with exercises you can do at home. The more effort and energy you put into your rehabilitation, the better the results. Your therapist or surgeon will determine when you will be able to put aside your walking aid. We encourage you to exercise daily. Walking, bicycling, or golf are great activities. Avoid any high impact activities such as jogging or lifting heavy weights. Physical therapy after discharge. Therapy is an important part of recovery after surgery. 
you need to concentrate on your therapy exercises a minimum of three times a day and attend therapy sessions as prescribed. Your initial post-operative therapy session will be coordinated with you prior to surgery. Avoiding falls. Please take extra precautions following your surgery to prevent any falls. Stairs are a particular hazard and you should use a cane, clutches, walker or handrails until you improve your strength and balance. Use common sense and don't try to move too quickly. Your surgeon and physical therapist will help you decide what assistive aids you will need after surgery and when you no longer need them. Respiratory. You will receive an incentive spirometer in the hospital. This device is used to help exercise your lungs after surgery. Take this device home with you and continue to use it regularly. Daily use of the incentive spirometer and your activity will help prevent respiratory illness such as pneumonia. Ice and elevation. Ice therapy will help to reduce swelling. You can place an ice on the affected area six times a day for up to 20 minutes. Be sure to avoid frostbite to the tissue and wrap an ice pack in a clean, soft towel. Driving. You may begin driving if you are able to get in and out of the car, move about the seat, and react quickly, moving your foot between the gas and the brake pedals. You should be able to put all your weight on your surgical leg and not require the assistance of a cane, crutch, or walker. We hope that this video has answered a lot of your questions as you embark on your surgical journey to better orthopedic health. Please keep your patient passport with you when you go to doctor's appointments and to the hospital. It's a great place to keep paperwork, take notes, and refer back to the information presented in this video. Your Banner Corps Center for Orthopedics team is always available to answer any questions and provide you with assistance. Thank you for joining us and here's to your health.